Hi everyone, welcome to our course on FiddleKit and the HMS SQL system with the popularization of mobile internet. Biometric authentication is everywhere. However, traditional biometric authentication has two vulnerabilities. Its API may be tampered with, and 2D face images are more likely to be spoofed. Huawei's powerful and systematic capabilities provide FiddleKit to avoid these vulnerabilities. The system integrated check ensures that the authentication API is tamper-proof, while 3D face images further secure your authentication results. What are the FiddleKit's features? BioAuthn, biometric authentication, is open to you as a public capability. Integrate a FiddleKit into your app conveniently and as needed. Even as a startup team, you can integrate FiddleKit and provide your app's users with a premium biometric authentication. BioAuthn authenticates using biometric features such as fingerprints and 3D faces. In addition, FiddleKit uses the results of the system integrated check as the prerequisite for local biometric authentication. It first checks the system for any apps with higher priority or permission to make biometric authentication more secure and preempt attacks from malicious apps. K-based verification is another layer of reliability. So, how is FiddleKit a more secure way to authenticate your users? It features 3D instead of 2D facial recognition, coupled with a system integrated check and K-based verification. In addition, BioAuthn costs local authentication APIs of Android and EMUI. The API cost stores collected fingerprints and faces in the Trusted Execution Environment, TEE, on the local device, where it also compares biometric features. By not storing or processing the data collected on the cloud, user privacy is protected against leaks. Here are three typical types of apps that use FiddleKit. First, finance apps. Banking and financial management are scenarios where the BioAuthn feature of FiddleKit lets your users sign in or make payments with biometric authentication, guaranteeing the security of user information and funds. Second, social apps. Your users sign in securely and conveniently. Third, shopping apps. Apart from a secure sign-in, small payments are authenticated by fingerprint. Of course, FiddleKit is not limited to these scenarios. Use FiddleKit wherever you need biometric authentication. To sum up, HMS Core's FiddleKit is a more secure biometric authentication mechanism that is open to easy integration into your app. FiddleKit brings your user's convenience without compromising on peace of mind. That's all for this course. Next, I will use sample code to demonstrate how to integrate FiddleKit into an app and how to use FiddleKit to realize biometric authentication. Hi everyone, welcome to the second chapter of this course, which is a workshop where you will learn how to integrate FiddleKit's BioAuthn feature. First, let's look at the main contents of this chapter. This chapter consists of three parts. The first part is the demo of main functions of FiddleKit's BioAuthn, including fingerprint authentication and 3D facial authentication. This will give you a hands-on look at FiddleKit's capabilities. The second part describes development preparations, including configuration that you need to make on Huawei Developer and in Android Studio. The last part is procedure for integrating BioAuthn, including project configuration and code implementation. Now, let's start with the demo. This demo shows a scenario where a user has added products to their shopping cart in a shopping app. As the user selects different products in the shopping cart, the total amount to be paid changes accordingly as shown in the lower part of the app. After selecting the products they want to buy, the user can tap checkout and the app will display a biometric authentication pop-up. If authentication is successful, the app displays the success screen. If the user fails the authentication, the app will display the failure screen. Depending on the app settings, 
the user can use their fingerprints or face for biometric authentication. As we can see in this demo, the app displays the authentication result screen to the user after biometric authentication is completed. There are three possible authentication results. 1. The biometric authentication is successful. 2. The biometric authentication fails. 3. The device does not support biometric authentication. We can see that the biometric authentication function is simple. Next, let's have a look at the 3D facial authentication process. After the user selects products in shopping cart they want to buy and taps checkout, the app displays a progress bar to signify that 3D facial authentication is in process. The app will display the success screen if the authentication is successful and the failure screen if the authentication fails. Now that we have seen a demo of biometric authentication in action, let's see how to implement the relevant functions. First, let's move on to development preparations. Before integrating FiddleKit app into your app, you need to configure app information in App Gallery Connect and accomplish the necessary configurations such as dependency package configurations in your project. Four steps are involved in configuring app information in App Gallery Connect. Step 1. Register as a developer on the Huawei developer website and create an Android app. Step 2. Generate a signing certificate fingerprint for the Android app. Step 3. Configure the signing certificate fingerprint in App Gallery Connect. Step 4. Enable the FiddleKit service. The first two steps are standard practice for all Huawei developers and will not be introduced here. For details, please refer the relevant document in the Huawei Basic Service Document Center. Let's start from step 3, configuring the signing certificate fingerprint. Why is this step required? It's because when the HMS SDK in your app calls HMS Core, the authenticity of the app needs to be verified using the signing certificate fingerprint. Before performing this step, you need to create an app in App Gallery Connect. Set the package type to APK, Android app, the device to mobile phone, and the app type to app or game. Then, locally generate a digital signature file for the created app and run the key to command of the Java SDK to obtain and SHA-256 fingerprint. This is the UI for running the key to command to generate and SHA-256 fingerprint. There are three types of fingerprints, MD5, SHA-1, and SHA-256. SHA-256 is one we need. The demo is performed on Windows operating system, but the procedure is similar for Mac and Linux operating system, so we won't be introducing them here. After obtaining the SHA-256 fingerprint, visit App Gallery Connect and open your app. Then, click the Develop tab, find the text box for configuring the SHA-256 fingerprint at the bottom of the page and copy and paste the generated fingerprint to the text box. Download the 8G Connect Service JSON file, which contains core configurations for app. You need to copy these configurations to your project in Android Studio. I'll talk about how to do so later. The last step is enabled to the FiddleKit service. Click Overview on the Develop tab page and App Gallery Connect. Click Manage APIs and toggle on the fiddle switch. You have not completed all the necessary configurations in App Gallery Connect. Next, let's move on to configurations in Android Studio. We provide the HMS SDK for integration through Maven repositories. Before getting started, you must first integrate the HMS SDK into Android Studio. The procedure is as follows. First, Add the app configuration file obtained from App Gallery Connect to Android Studio. Then, configure the Maven repository address of the HMS SDK. Lastly, add the build dependencies and App Gallery Connect plugin address. Next, let's see how to integrate the HMS SDK. The first step is to open the created app and copy the 8G Connect Services JSON file downloaded from App Gallery Connect to the App Road directory. 
Note that if the app is modified in App Gallery Connect during development, you need to download the file again and overwrite the old file in Android Studio with the new one. The second step is to open the build Gradle file in the root directory of the product. First, find the resource repository section in all projects and add the Moven repository address of the HMS SDK to the section. Then, configure the Moven repository address of the HMS SDK in the repository section of build script. Finally, configure the App Gallery Connect plugin address in the dependencies section of build script. The third step is to open the build Gradle file in the app directory. First, add the App Gallery Connect plugin address to the file header. Then, add it to dependencies and dependencies. HMS Fiddle dependency and AG Connect Core dependency. In addition, remember to configure the Keystore file in the release section in the file. The Keystore file contains information about the file generated using the key tool command, including the name, alias, and the password of the file. After completing the relevant configurations, Click Sync Now to synchronize the previous Maven repository address and plugin. Next, let's see how to integrate FiddleKit's BioAuthn into your app and implement the Biometric Authentication function. First, let's look at the Biometric Authentication process. At the beginning of Biometric Authentication, the app will check integrated check results of the operating system to see if an app with a higher priority exists. If so, the operating system is insecure. In this case, the app quits the biometric authentication and displays a failure message. If the system integrated check result indicated that the operating system is secure, the app continues biometric authentication and displays a failure message if the authentication fails or a success message if the authentication is successful. You now have an understanding of BioAuthn's basic running process. Next, let's move on to learning about BioAuthn's core APIs. This APIs will be used during development. This table lists BioAuthn's core APIs. Let's look at them one by one. The first API is BioAuthn Manager which can be called to check whether fingerprint authentication can be used by current operating system. The second API is BioAuthn Prompt, which is the main entry point for BioAuthn's fingerprint authentication feature. The third API is BioAuthn Callback, which is used to obtain the fingerprint or 3D facial authentication result of BioAuthn. This API contains four callback methods which correspond to different authentication status, you should implement the method according to your app service logic. The fourth API is BioAuthn Result, which is the input parameter of the BioAuthn Callback API. The fifth API is Gravital Object, which is the rubber class for encryption objects associated with fingerprint or 3D facial authentication. This API helps to protect the authentication process through encryption. The sixth API is BioAuthn Prompt Prompt Info, which represents information in the fingerprint authentication pop that is shown to users. The seventh API is BioAuthn Prompt Prompt Info Builder, which is the constructor for generating the BioAuthn Prompt Prompt Info object. The eighth API Face Manager is the main entry point for BioAuthn 3D facial authentication. For more information about these APIs, check out the SDK help document on the Huawei developer website. Now, let's see how to implement BioAuthn's basic authentication process. First, open the main activity file in the demo. To facilitate learning, all code related to biometric authentication is stored in this file. The project's other code is mainly used for implementing the shopping cart function. Two authentication methods, fingerprint authentication and 3D facial authentication, are implemented using different methods in this file. 
Let's first look at how to implement fingerprint authentication, which includes four steps. Step 1. Create a BioAuthn Manager object for checking whether fingerprint authentication is supported in the current environment. Step 2. Implement the BioAuthn Callback API to process various fingerprint authentication results. This API has four functions, which correspond to different authentication results. Step 3. Build the prompt object and configure the information displayed in the authentication window. Lastly, enable authentication to call the authentication UI. Now, let's go through these steps in detail. First, find the fingerprint authentication function. This function completes fingerprint authentication and adds an encryption object, crypto object, to ensure authentication security. Create the BioAuthn Manager object and call the CanAuth method of the object. This method returns an integer with which you can determine whether the current operating system supports fingerprint authentication. If this method returns zero, the current operating system does not support fingerprint authentication. An error message with an error code is displayed. The authentication ends here. If the method returns a number other than zero, the current operating system supports fingerprint authentication. In this case, you can go to next step. Next, let's implement the BioAuthn callback API in the create BioAuthn prompt method. Here, the BioAuthn callback API is implemented using anonymous internal classes. It contains three functions: unAuthn arrow, unAuthn succeeded, and unAuthn failed which correspond to three different authentication results. Let's first look at the simple function unAuthn succeeded. This function is called when the entire authentication process is normal. That is, the authentication UI is displayed successfully and the user's fingerprint is correct. A new activity has been enabled in this function. You can pass the authentication result to the activity to notify the user that the authentication is successful. Now, let's look at the onAuthnFailed function, which is callback upon authentication failure. The authentication fails if an incorrect fingerprint is provided. Similarly, a new activity has been enabled in this function. You can pass the authentication result to the activity to notify the user that the authentication has failed. As for the unAuthn error functions, it is caught if an authentication error occurs. Note that the authentication error here is different from authentication failure. Authentication failure means that all information has been correctly collected, but the user's fingerprint does not match the registered one. While an authentication error means that an error occurred during information collection or authentication. For example, because the fingerprint sensor has malfunctioned. In other words, authentication failure is a normal result, while authentication error is due to an unexpected fault. Then create a callback object. You've now successfully implemented the BioAuthn callback API for processing authentication results. Next, let's move on to the third step, creating a BioAuthn prompt object and configuring the content of the authentication window. After the callback object is created, create a BioAuthn prompt object and pass the callback object to BioAuthn prompt as an input parameter. Now we can create a complete BioAuthn prompt object with this function. After creating the object, we need to configure the content of the authentication window. Go back to the previous function. First, we need to create a prompt info builder object. And then configure the title subtitle, and description of the authentication window. Next, we need to configure a cancellation button in the authentication window so the user can click the button to cancel authentication. After configuring the content of the authentication window, we can call the build method of builder to generate the info object of prompt. This code snippet is to set an encryption object. What is the purpose of the encryption object? As we know, the reliability of fingerprint authentication is very important. 
Therefore, we definitely do not want our authentication process to be attacked by any third party. Fingerprint authentication is prone to malicious attacks by third party middleware. A common attack means is to intercept and tamper with the result provided by the fingerprint sensor. Thus, the encryption object, Gribital object, is provided to prevent such attacks. We encapsulated the code for generating an encryption object in the factory class, which is provided in the security package of Java. After creating an encryption object, we have accomplished the third step, as in we have created a bio-authenprompt object, configured the content of the authentication window, and generated an encryption object. Lastly, we need to call the auth method of the prompt object and pass prompt info and the encryption object to the auth method as input parameters. Now, the authentication process is triggered and the authentication UI is displayed. You now know the process of implementing code for fingerprint authentication. Let's have a brief review. In this part of the workshop, we created a BioAuth Manager object, implemented the BioAuth Callback API, and created a BioAuth Prompt method, overriding its three functions, and generated BioAuth Prompt object. Then we used the Prompt Info object to set the authentication window information and generated an encryption object. Finally, we caught the authentication window to trigger authentication. Next, Let's move on to 3D Facial Authentication. The code for 3D Facial Authentication is also encapsulated into a function. The overall process also includes four steps. First, check whether the app has the permission to use the device's camera. Next, implement the BioAuthn callback API for processing the authentication result. The third step is to create a face manager object for checking whether 3D facial authentication is supported by the current operating system. The last step is to enable authentication. Now let's go through these steps in detail. First, we call the check self permission method to check whether the app has permission to use the device's camera. This is because the device camera is required for 3D facial authentication. If the app does not have the permission, the authentication ends here. If the app has permission, go to the next step. Let's move on to the next step. As with fingerprint authentication, this step also implements the BioAuth callback API. The difference is that the onAuth help function is added for 3D facial authentication. The onAuth succeeded, onAuth error, and onAuth failed functions are the same as those for fingerprint authentication. So I won't repeat them here. Let's talk about the onAuth help function. As we have mentioned before, an authentication error occurs due to an uncoverable error during authentication. The onAuth help function is called, however, when a recoverable error occurs. What is a recoverable error? Here is an example. During fingerprint authentication, the user moves the finger away from the fingerprint sensor for the sensor class all required information. As a result, fingerprint authentication fails. This is the recoverable error. The app can prompt the user to place their finger on the fingerprint sensor for a longer period of time to rectify the error. The same problem also exists during 3D facial authentication. For example, if the full official image of a user is not obtained during authentication, the app needs to notify the user and collect the user's facial image again. Hence, an auth error is called when an unrecoverable error occurs, while the an auth help function is called when a recoverable error occurs. We have completed step two, that is, implementing the BioAuthn callback API and processing the authentication result. Next, let's move on to the third step, creating a face manager object. After creating a face manager object, we can call its canauth method to check out whether current operating system supports 3D facial authentication. If the method returns a number other than zero, the current operating system does not support 3D facial authentication, and the authentication ends here. If the method returns zero, 
The current operating system supports 3D facial authentication and we can move on. Here, we generated an empty handler object and an empty encryption object. Why do we use an empty encryption object? The reason is that Keystore is not combined with the function in this version. In a later version, we'll combine Keystore to the function. Lastly, let's enable the authentication. Call the auth method of the face manager object and pass prepared parameters to the method. The most important input parameter is callback object. Now we have enabled the authentication. Let's summarize what we have done. This code snips at implement the first step, which is checking whether the app can use the device's camera in the current operating system. This code snip at implement the second step, which is implementing the BioAuthn callback API for processing the authentication result. This code snippet is used to check whether the current operating system supports 3D facial authentication, while this code snippet is used to enable the authentication. In this chapter, we've shown you a demo of Fiddle Kids BioAuthn feature in action and explained to you about the development preparation that you need to make, including configurations in App Gallery Connect and Android Studio. In order to integrate BioAuthn into your app, lastly, we use the two functions to illustrate how to integrate BioAuthn feature into your app. That's all for this course. Thank you for watching.